Hey guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Today, we are going to make salvage ornaments. Now, for those of you that need a really quick in and out tutorial because it's the last day of school, you need a quick gift for the kids' teachers because they forgot to tell you all about it, let me give you a quick rundown. You grab a shape. I cut mine out of felt. I'm choosing to use the salvages that have the little numbers on the bottom. You stitch them down, add a little hanger. I went ahead and stitched all the way around the perimeter and you got a quick ornament. Now don't forget to come on back after you drop the kids off and we're gonna do a long tutorial and I'm gonna explain it all to you. Okay guys, I've had these ornaments in my mind for a while now. Since I started working with salvages, I thought, you know, these would make really great ornaments and it would be kind of fun to use any of the fabric that we've created a quilt with throughout the year to make a matching ornament. So I've been just doing a few test ones, just playing around a little bit to see what I liked. I've decided that I cut out a stocking. I've got a large ornament, a small ornament, a mitten. We can do a star. We can do a heart and we can do a Christmas tree. So basically any shape you want to do, you can do it. You can do it for any holiday and not just Christmas. I've decided to go ahead and stitch mine directly onto felt. You can stitch your salvages down onto a piece of, maybe a piece of stabilizer or a piece of scrap fabric or something and then cut out the shape and do the thing where you put the front to the back you turn them all right side out and stitch around it. But I really like the raw edge of the salvages. If I were using just straight up regular Christmas fabric, I might want it to look really nice like that. But since I'm using salvages that are already all kind of scruffy and you've got all the fluffy and fur here, I thought it would be fine to just go ahead and do a stitch around it and have an ornament that way. So I went online, I had some shapes already you can use online ones i searched for felt ornaments for free patterns and that's where i found like a mitten for the circle i just took one of our favorite glasses that are plastic cup and i made the large one for this way and for the small circle i just went ahead and traced the bottom so depending on whether you want a large ornament or a small you can use either size look around to see whatever you have that's a circle the circle was a little bit harder to find online which was strange because i did find a lot of round circles that had little felt scenes in it with snowmen and santa and stuff but no one had the actual circle so it was just easy for the circle to go ahead and do that and again, the tree, I had a hard time finding a shape for the tree. So I just went ahead and I made one. I went and took my ruler and I drew a really long line this way. And I drew a really long line this way. And I wanted it to be about three and a half inches. So I took my three and a half inch on my ruler and I just kept sliding it up until at the zero and the three and a half touched both lines. And then I drew the bottom line. We're not looking for perfection here. You can have your tree short and fat long and skinny you can go ahead and try to do a little you know how the christmas trees when the kids draw them they have the little branches that go out but i thought for putting the selvages on and cutting around it that it would probably be easiest just to go with a triangle finding a heart wasn't too bad i did search a lot of times for four and a half inch heart outline and that gave me this one i did the same thing for the stars the mitten was for a regular ornament. I just searched for a small felt mitten ornament and they came up like this and you can get either one mitten or there could be four on the page, depending on what you found. Pinterest had a lot of options for me. We did mini stockings the other week, we, so you could use that same stocking pattern. You can use something you already have at home that may have been purchased. You can freehand, with well, the circles you kind of need to have some form of template, but most of these you can freehand. You can draw the star by putting your ruler. Remember when we did it like this as a kid? You can get your star that way. The heart, you fold it in half and draw half and open it up and then they're equal sides. So there's plenty of ways for you to get your templates. And then the next thing you need is you need your salvages. 
Now there are a lot of parts of the selvage that just have all the writing and those worked really great when we were making, you know, I don't think I've ever seen one with double writing like that. It's Frosty the Snowman, which would be great for one of these projects. So I'm gonna put a link up here to the selvage pouches that we made before where I show you how to actually stitch it down to the pouch. We stitched it onto the batting then, this time we're stitching on the felt, there's really no difference. But you can use these parts here but I thought for Christmas it's more fun to use the colored circles because they look like ornaments. So that way on my ornament, I have ornaments. Now I did use just a solid one that didn't have anything on it because I wanted all of this fringe. And underneath the fringe, it's got when pigs fly. I mean, it's, it's just, I thought it was kind of silly. This is thread left over from the project that it was made with. But I thought that was a fun little peekaboo thing. So the little eyelashes are down and if anyone can see it. It's If you have something that has a fun saying or a snowman, something Christmassy, Santa, you can always like Santa's watching you or something silly like that. You know how it is with kids and holidays, any way to get their mind off of their impatience of waiting for Christmas. So like this one, I've used the circles already off of it. So I have all this extra selvage left over for another project. I have the circles on this one. Sometimes you can get really lucky, like this piece of fabric has 18 colors, so that gives me a lot of space, a lot of inches to use for my ornaments. Now that's, let me show you what I did with one of these. This Christmas tree, I have one fabric here. You can kind of see I left a little bit of the green because it's green for a tree. Now all of these are all from two different fabrics, but you can't tell, I alternated them. I went this fabric one, fabric two, fabric one, fabric two, fabric one. But they're all just different colored circles, so it looks like baubles on the tree, like ornaments. So it doesn't really matter if you're using the same fabric over and over. If you have that long piece with lots of numbers, you're gonna be able to cut off each section as you need it and just keep alternating on the way up. This one happened to be all different ones. I do have a lot of five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, six, seven. That's okay. I didn't pay any attention to any of that. I wanted my star to just have a little bit of a nod to the selvage, but then to actually just have a bunch of the fabric. So this is one, two, three pieces of the same selvage from the big length, and then just a little bit extra up here because it didn't have any more writing. So I just put it at the top of the star. Now I am using felt. This is just basic acrylic felt that I picked up at the store over the years. One of the things I wanted to show you, as you can see, I traced my pattern out with ink pen. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and trim this up when I cut it out on the inside of the lines so that that ink isn't showing. And the reason I wanna be careful of that is because with this project, you can see the back. So if there was any ink on the back or any ink just sticking out through here, you're gonna see it. And you wanna kinda of keep it nice and clean and keep that hidden. So if you're just gonna take your, where's my guy? If you're just gonna take your design and just trace it out with, I wouldn't use a Sharpie because that really makes it very wide and it tends to bleed a little. The ink pen isn't too bad. If you have something with a thin ink, a thin tip to it, it works really well, a fine tip. But if I just trim along the inside here, it's not gonna make my ornament that much smaller. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of that ink so you can't see it. Now, if I occasionally leave a little piece in, it won't be too bad. I can trim it up after if I notice it. But for now, I'm just gonna go take it a little bit slow, work around, and there you go. Like I have a little bit of an oops here. So this is going to be the front of my ornament. I like my, uh, my sneakers. I like my stockings to go to the right. So all of that's gonna be hidden and it's not gonna be a problem. On some of these, I am using a ribbon to hang them. And on others, I have some embroidery floss. This just happens to be the pearl cotton. It has a twist to it. I thought that would be fine so I don't have to worry about anything coming undone or untwisting or anything. I used white for most of it. I did use some green on the trees. When I started out with the embroidery floss, I went ahead and I just did a little tacking stitch here and I brought it all the way down to the bottom of the ornament and I put my first piece on and stitched across it so that it would hold it in. So if this one right here, it actually went over the thread so I can pull this. 
but this one it got it pretty good at least one side's being held down and then as i'm adding my selvages on it's going to stitch the rest of it down and it's going to make it really secure but i found it was easier to put a long piece of the floss on there than to try to hold a little piece up here just because it's so thin with the ones where I used a ribbon, I just waited till I got to the last piece. I held the ribbon on there and I stitched over it. I also went ahead and I stitched all the way around the outside afterwards so it's gonna double hold that ribbon in. So with my salvages like this, I have some in my bin that are only the numbers and then I'd have to dig through and grab that. But since I have this right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this color off the actual main fabric. As I've been cutting my selvages now, I like to leave about an inch above it so that I have some to play with for projects. Now I still have all of this that I can save for something else. If you wanna save this, you can go ahead and still use this because it's a bit, pretty much a one inch piece of fabric. And I would just take this whole piece while I'm at the sewing machine and I would just go ahead and lay it down. I would stitch about an eighth of an inch off of this edge and then I would trim it. And then I would take the next piece. After it's stitched down, I would trim it. I didn't want to trim any ahead of the time like you're going to see me do right now. Just because I was doing one ornament at a time. If you were doing a whole bunch of round ornaments or stockings or something, you can chain piece them if you want. Then I would take the next one and then once again, about an eighth of an inch, I'd stitch it down. i trim it off. And you see how this one piece is going to carry me all the way up. This one's not quite wide enough, but if I get another piece, I can save that for the top. I can bring in just one piece of red fabric if I want, just to make it a little bit stand out and be a little different, or just bring in some more numbers and fill it in. And then after I have it all filled in, it would look something like this. This one still needs to have the ribbon added in. I just fold this back. I put my piece of ribbon in it, and I would just go ahead and stitch it across the top. This is where you can just decide, do you want to have it with the pinking shears? You know, I have the pinking shears that make it all serrated so it goes around, stops everything from fraying. So I can serrate this all the way around. This time I chose just to do the selvages and not the felt. I didn't want to bring my ornament in and make it any smaller. Now this one, I went ahead and I did do that eighth of an inch all the way around to hold them all down on the edges so that nothing flops around at all. Because remember, we're only putting one stitch across it so it does have parts that could flop around a little. But this one, I decided to go ahead and wait until after I trimmed it all up, then I'll stitch around. I just wanted to see how it would work for different ones. Plus, as I said, I still need to add the ribbon in. I did sew this ribbon in first and then trim this one up. So when I was trimming it, I just went ahead and moved my ribbon out of the way. That way I can just go ahead and trim all the way around and then my ribbon would go back up. So I can take my pinking shears to this or I can take my regular scissors. So I just went right along the edge and just followed the felt as my guideline. If you have the rotary cutter that has the pinking blade in it already, you can just slowly go around it and follow that shape. That would save you a little bit of time and struggle because these tend to be a little bit tight and they can be a little hard on the hands after a while, especially if you're gonna be doing a dozen of these ornaments. And then that gives me that nice little jagged edge right along the edge. So it's all pinked up. So as I said, I put my ribbon in and then I'll stitch all the way around. Now on my stocking, I decided to start out at the bottom and make it a little bit straight. Then I put one piece in kind of a little bit more on a diagonal so that I can get a little bit crooked and then come back to go straight up. Because if I was going this way, I could put the whole thing on the diagonal and be perfectly fine. I just wanted to play with it and see what else I could do. You could go on a diagonal either way. I'm not sure if you'd wanna go up and down. I think that would kind of really change the look. It would change how your ornament looks. I, I personally like it side by side, but if you like it to go up and down, you can go ahead and do it that way. Same with the Christmas trees. You can try a variety of things. 
I tried to do the garland that goes like this. And it's not too bad, it's okay. And then I did the garland with the little fraying to go across. I like that one a little bit better. And then I just covered the entire tree. So whatever works for you. I did change on these. I did leave my bobbin thread white because I just wanted to show you guys that when I did these, I did stitch two or three times just to hold it down on each edge. This one I did across the top and the bottom. And then here, I just kind of went through the middle and the top just to hold it down. But on this one, I changed my bobbin thread so it wasn't as noticeable. You are going to see your stitching. It's, it's, it's an, an inevitable unless you do the process where you put the two of them together, you stitch around, leave an opening, flip them, and then stitch that opening or top stitch around to close it up. But if you want something quick to just stick in your little cards and little tuck in, or to have in that little basket by the front door for people to just grab a little ornament on their way out. So you can do any shape you want. If you don't have salvages or you don't like the look of salvages, you can go ahead and just use straight fabric. If you wanna use Christmas fabric or solids and make your stripes, or you can just go with the standard ornament and you can just cut out an entire stocking all in one color, one fabric. You can either quilt it or just stitch around the edges, add your hanger, and you can have the same thing. You can use felt, you can use fleece. There's a variety of things that you can use on the back that won't fray. So that's just a quick little thing that you can make to add to your cards. As I said, you can hand them out at the office. You can give them to bus drivers, something a little bit to remember the kids by. If you want to have it that you can write on the back of it, if you, you can do your stitching, make your fabric separately. So if you're going to make an ornament, either cut it out of, as I said, you can cut it out of your stabilizer or some type of a thin fabric. Go ahead and stitch it all down and then make this piece back here instead of it being felt. You could even stitch it onto the felt if you wanted, but make the back cardstock. Then if you're giving it to a teacher or a bus driver or even just to keep at your house, you can go ahead and write the year and who it's to or who it's from or something on it or just a year. Put your ribbon in the middle or your hanger in the middle, stitch all the way around to hold that cardstock on, and you'll have a nice sturdy ornament and you'll have the year written on the back. You can write on the back of the felt if you'd like, but as most of us know, it's really difficult to write on felt. So if you wanna go ahead and do it that way, you can add that little cardstock to the back. It'll make it a little bit sturdier. But I like how these are okay. I like to have ornaments on my trees that the kids can play with. And if the cats or the dog knock it down, it's not gonna break. My kids were always allowed to redecorate the bottom two. We had artificial trees, so you had the two different layers that were on the bottom, and we allowed them to decorate those any way they want. They had special ornaments that they could take on and off and redecorate every day, 12 times a day if they wanted to. Otherwise, they're gonna be playing with your good ornaments and they're going to redecorate a tree in the way you don't like. So either give them their own tree to decorate, maybe a little four foot one on a table or on the floor for them to play with. Get yourself a nice new one, a pre-lit one, and let them have the old one so that they can decorate it and play with the ornaments any way they want. And then they can have soft ornaments like this that aren't gonna cause any type of an issue. Thanks for hanging out with me again this week. And remember, create with Scraptitude. And I'll see you next time. Bye.